Hey guys, welcome back to How to Build a Blog with Laravel. This is part number 22, and it is all about adding slugs to our blog posts so that we can, in a more friendly, user-friendly way, we can um, create better URLs for our blog posts for the, our users to see. So I'll see you guys in a second, and we'll go ahead and get started. All right, once again, welcome back to part number 22. If you are just tuning in for the first time, you're pretty far behind. And while you might get some value out of this video, um, to get the full value out of the series and really learn um, everything you know need to know about Laravel, you're gonna wanna go back from the beginning. Links to that playlist are down in the description. I highly recommend you go ahead and do it. For those of you guys that have been following along, um, Buckle in your seatbelts because we're in for a really big ride today. We've got a lot of stuff to cover. I'm going to try not to talk too much. We're just going to be working um, hard on uh, the specific things and going from one thing to the next. You might need to pause or rewind this video. Just kind of know that in advance. I'm kind of planning on that. I'm going to try to cover a ton of material in this video. Hopefully it doesn't go too long, but that's a possibility. Um, all right. So everyone has been requesting adding slugs to our application. So I'm here to make your dreams come true and we're gonna make this happen. Um, now, we need to first of all look at where we are in our application before we um, you know, we take on a new feature like this. And this is gonna be the case anytime you add a new feature to, your to um, any of the projects that you work on. Um, you're gonna to wanna to think out of new feature pretty clearly before you start it because there's a lot of moving parts when you're adding a feature that you didn't maybe initially anticipate. The first thing you need to think about is basically your database. Are you needing to store anything in your database? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and open up Sublime real quick um, in our project here. And um, actually what we should do first of all is we should open up our project in um, a, some sort of GUI for, C, for looking at our, our database. So I'm gonna go over here, you guys should know this. I'm using SQL Pro, but you can use whatever you'd like. We're gonna connect to our database and this is the, oops, this is the, um, ah, shoot, blog. Couldn't even think of what we were doing for a second. All right, so we currently have four tables in our database. Um, for those of you, I don't know if I addressed this, so I'm just gonna mention it. One of you guys are like, well, we've only created, we only have really created uh, one table. Well, if you remember when we ran our migrations, we do technically have a users table, even though it's not filled in yet. And we also have a password resets table. And this is given to us when we create a new Laravel project. When we ran the migration, it automatically generated that. We could have stopped it if we wanted to, but if you remember back to that video, I said, don't worry about it because we're going to um, <clears throat> do this in the next video, actually, the authentication. So so anyway, that's what we're doing. Um, that's where these two video post, these two tables came from. There's also a migrations post uh, table. And the migrations table is only used by Laravel. It lets it know basically um, the order that these uh, migrations were created and when they were created and so forth. So it could reverse them if needed. So that's what this uh, migrations table is all for. And then the last one, which is the one we've been working on, is our posts table. This you know, holds the title and the body, and then they created an updated app, but that's it. We don't have anything else. So if we're gonna be adding a slug for our blog post, we need to put it in the database, which means we need to add a column in this database for our slug because um, that's how we're going to identify it. So that's the first thing we need to do, is the first thing we need to do is add a column to our database. So that's what we'll be working on here, and we'll be using migrations to do that. So I wanna show you guys how you can add a column after the fact um, using migrations. So that's what we'll do first of all. After that, what we need to do is we need to actually go back to our post crud. The post crud's important because that's where we actually create and edit, you know, delete the, the uh, posts that we're working on. And now we have a new item inf of information that we didn't have when we first worked on that, the slug. So we're gonna need to be able to view the slug to make sure it's what we want it to be. We're gonna need to be able to edit it. We're gonna need to be able to save it and so forth. All of that needs to be added into our post crud. We don't need to rewrite our crud. We're just gonna need to make a few tweaks to make sure that it accepts the slug um, as a new piece of information that goes into the database. So that's kind of the next thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna go through and edit that. The next thing we need to do after that is we're gonna to need to work with our routes. Our routes file needs to accept, see and recognize that there's a slug available. 
So we'll need to, and then obviously direct it to the right page. So that's another thing we're gonna need to work on is our routes. Um, we might, in some, most cases, you might need new controllers for features. Sometimes you don't. In this case, I don't think we're gonna do a new, um, we're gonna do a, do a new uh, controller for this. We're probably just gonna put this in the pages controller. Um, the pages controller is gonna be kind of where all of our front end stuff is. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put the logic in the pages controller and um, and just call it good there. Because if I created a new po a new controller just for blog posts, it would only have one thing in it. And I can't really think of what else you'd put in there. So it'd be kind of weird to have a controller just for one item. Not unheard of, but it would just, something that I can't see doing. Okay, so um, we've got that. Next is, um, basically we should be able to just run it. So our controller should be able to accept the new routes. We'll have parameters passed in. And that should basically finish up our slugs. So that's basically what we're working on. Those are kind of the four steps. Let's go ahead and get started with the first one, which is basically we need to um, add the item to the database. We need to add the column to accept that data into the database. Okay, so. Like I mentioned before, we've got our um, we got our columns here. We got title, body, created at, updated at. We just need to add the slug, a column to you know save the slug so that, that we can find it. So let's go ahead and close our database. We don't need that right now. And what we can go ahead and do is uh, really quick. I want to actually just open up the documentation so that you guys can see. Um, I actually had it open and I deleted it. That wasn't smart. So um, let's do Laravel.com. Let's head on over to documentation. And then let's um, come on down here on the side column of your documentation under database. You're going to just, I think you just click getting started. Nope, that's not it. Um, let, oh, migrations. You want to click migrations. Okay. So under not migrations, this basically is going to explain to you how you um, use migrations to add information to the database. You can see that there's lots of information here and you can read this, you know, at your own speed. But if we click over here under writing migrations and scroll down a little bit, you can see that we can use migrations not just to create new tables, which we already knew, but you could also rename a table. You could delete a table, just dropping a table, deleting a table. Um, and then here is creating new columns. So what we want to do is we want to use our existing table, but create new columns in that table. So you can see here that this is the code that you would use. You're going to do schema table, um, and then you kind of the name of the table, and then you basically just add, just like we did before, but you're gonna add the new columns that you want into your into your table. So let's go ahead and do that, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that over here, and um, let's go ahead, first thing we need to do is create a new migration. So um, let's see if I can do this from memory or if I need to look it up. We're gonna do PHP artisan make migration, and then we're gonna do the name of the migration. So in this case, we're gonna do add um, slug to users and then we're gonna click enter and um, it's gonna create the new migration so it created the new migration add slug to users the name of the migration you just kind of want to describe what you're doing um, in those in those so that when you come over into your database into migrations you can find it so here you can see add slug to users and these will always be in chronological order so you click you click right here and um, this opens up a pre-made migration for you, which means we don't really have to do anything other than add in our schema markup, which is what we saw in the Laravel documentation. So here, um, remember that the up function is what we do when we're um, running the migration. And if you want to undo something, then when you uh, roll back the migration, the down function will um, undo what you're doing, okay? So here, first thing we're gonna do is we need to do the schema keyword. And remember, I mean, this is what I'm getting from the from uh, the documentation here. So it's schema table and the name of the table, and then an anonymous function. So schema table. Um, we're going to do posts because we're putting it, we're adding this column to the post table, and then we create an anonymous function. And um, uh, you can create just any type of variable. You can do we can just do table here that we want to reference it to, or you can do t. I think I did t in some of the other ones. Or do I use table? I use table. Okay. I think I do. Anyway. Okay. So T. Um, I think the the variable T is more common with, uh, with uh, Rails projects. Okay. So then we open up our curly brace for the anonymous function. And then inside of here is where we um, actually add the, um, the markup for each individual column that we want to add. Let me just finish this off real fast and add a semicolon. 
Okay, then come back up here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna access this table property and then we're going to tell it what kind of column we wanna add. So in this case, we're gonna add a, var, a, a variable character, a var car. And in order to do that with Laravel, you just add string. And again, coming back to our documentation, you can see here all the available column types in the docs. Again, the docs are gonna be in the description. And um, these are all the variable type, or all the column types that you can use. So there's a ton in here that you might wanna take a look at. The most common are obviously strings. Um, that's what you're generally storing or integers and sometimes Boolean and time. But then there's lots of other specific ones. Okay, so you can see here that when we do table string, then we're creating a var car equivalent in our database, which is what we wanna do. We talked about before how var, var cars have a maximum of 255 characters they can store. So just keep that in mind when you're doing your validation or actually when you're creating the database, just think about here, if a slug can be, if you want your slug to be more than 255 characters. In this case, I think that's a good, I mean, 255 characters is quite a bit of work. Um, that's, a, that's a lot to write into a slug. So we're gonna go ahead and just call that good. So we're gonna do string, and um, then we just give it the name of the column in here. So um, we're back over here. So table, string, the name of the column, we're gonna call it slug, nothing fancy. And then we could just uh, end it with a semicolon. I'm just thinking real quick if there's anything else we need. Um, I don't really think there is. So what we're gonna go ahead is we're going to now create the down function. So to create the down function, we follow the same basic principles. Um, we're accessing this table because we've already created the table. So when we undo this specific migration, we don't wanna delete the table. That's what we did in the last migration. But that's because we are creating the table in the last migration. So in that, when we reverse that migration, we wanna delete the table. However, if we're only reversing this one migration, then the only thing we wanna reverse is adding this column for slug. So we don't wanna delete the table, we just wanna remove the column for slug. So um, what we need to do here is we just do our same thing. We create an anonymous function and, um, and then inside of here, we need to drop the columns. Now I don't remember, I think it's just drop column in camel case, but let's just double check. I'm gonna come back over here and um, we saw up here, so us dropping tables. Let's see, how do you drop columns? Modifying columns, updating, renaming, dropping columns. Okay, so yeah, you just do, it's just drop column. Uh, um, it's just the drop column thing in, uh, in camel case. There is a note here, I do wanna let you guys know, cause you're gonna get an error if you try to drop the column. Uh, if you try to roll back this migration and you're using this drop column method, um, you're gonna get an error. And that's because you have to add something to your composer.json to make this work. So let's go ahead and just add that. Um, I usually don't worry about it until I get the error and then I add it, but that's just me. Okay, so um, you'll need to add this doctrine slash debal to your um, composer.json file. So let's go ahead and copy that. So now let's go ahead, let's actually make that quick change to our composer.json. So come over here to our composer.json. And we just need to add this doctrine slash debal. So let's go ahead, I copied it into my clipboard. So let's just add it right here. Um, we need to add quotes around it. And um, that should be good. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this composer.json. We need to also come over to our terminal and do composer update. Now, if you don't use composer update all like every day, you should probably run composer self update before you do composer update. And what you're doing when you do composer self update is you actually tell composer to go out and update its knowledge of existing scripts. And so the reason this is important is because um, composer basically like every time you run that composer self update, you're telling the composer to run, to update itself, not to update your file, but to update its its own self, its own application. Um, composer update tells it to update, to use composer to update your application, okay? So that's the difference between composer update and composer self update. The reason you wanna do composer self update every, you wanna do it a few times a month is usually a good idea. Um, and that's just because you basically tell composer self update goes out, updates itself, if, itself and its knowledge of certain scripts. So you might have a really, um, a newer version of a script that Composer may not know about if you haven't ran that self update in a while. So I always like to come in here before I run update and do self dash update. This tells up Composer to update itself so it knows everything. You can see here it's um, 
There we go, it's updating to the newest version. It's really quick. And now you can do Composer Update. And this actually updates your Laravel application. Okay, actually, I um, I realized with this error here that uh, we actually need to put this in your uh, developer requires. So move Doctrine Debal over to um, your, your required dev. Okay, because we don't actually need this product in our actual, because we're not going to be doing migrations in the production version, so we just need it in the development version. Okay, now let's add our star like this. Save, Composer update, and now it's working. Okay, perfect. Keep in mind, this can take a while. Um, Composer update is not a quick, it's not a quick thing. <laughs> I've seen this take five minutes or more before. So just, just give it some patience. If you have a slower internet connection, it may be even faster. Um, I have like, I have actually have Google Fiber. So I've got as fast of internet as you can get, and uh, it's going to take a while. And so you just, that's just the way it is. Okay, so it looks like it's just finishing up. There it goes, it finished. I fast forwarded obviously for you guys because um, I didn't want you guys to just sit away. I didn't have anything to say um, while this ran. But um, anyway, just for the record, it took about two minutes, okay? And that's, I've got really fast internet and it took me about two minutes. So don't worry if it takes you, um, you know, two minutes obviously or even longer if you have um, a little bit slower internet because this requires internet connection, okay? Moving on. All right, so we've got this compose. We've got our updated our composer.json. Why did we do that? Well, we did that so that we could reverse. We could drop a column in our table. So now let's go ahead and just write it up. Table, and we're going to do drop column. Once again, remember this is just um, all we're doing here is just reversing what we did up on the up um, up here under function up. And that's just because if we run into problems with uh, what we're working on and we want to reverse the migration. This will allow us to do that. We can just write uh, rollback migration and it will undo the work that we did here, okay? So that's why this is important. You should always have a, uh, don't forget a semicolon there. Um, we should always have this, uh, a, a reversal set up just so that we can move forward and backwards in our migrations. You'll, and if you run into problems in your application, you'll quickly see why it's really important. This extra little effort is gonna really pay off big dividends um, in, if you run into trouble, okay? Let's go ahead and save our migration. And um, now that we got the migration saved, let's go ahead and actually run the migration to add that column to the database. Oh, you know what? Actually, come, before we do that, I forgot. Let's open it up again. There's two things I forgot about migrations that we need to do. The first thing is that slugs are gonna be accessed very, very often. And um, I, we really should consider indexing this column. Now, for those of you guys that don't know much about databases, you you can have as many columns in a database as you want. And obviously MySQL or whatever engine you're using can um, can do searches over that, over that column and try to find items in that column using all sorts of parameters. Um, it can do that on any type of column that you have in your database. However, if you index a column, it's much, much, much faster. Um, basically, it maintains an active index if you know what those are, <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. it. Basically, it's just like a, uh, you know, it, ha it n basically already knows what's in there. It just speeds up the process of finding items in that database, in that column, super, super, super quickly, okay? And it's done on a column by column basis, not a table by table. So we can index certain columns in our database and not other columns. And by default, um, we do not index columns in, with, when we just, create these like table strings. This is a non-indexed column. And the reason it's is because by default, you don't need to index columns. Indexing columns adds a little bit of overhead every time you write to your, um, to every time you write a new item in there, you're adding a little bit of overhead um, as far as extra work that the database needs to do. And so we don't try to do that unless we absolutely have to. However, in exchange for having that little bit of overhead when we add to the database, we get a significant amount of uh, reduced overhead when we actually read to the database. So when we're doing something like a blog where you are not writing to the database very often, you're only creating a blog post every few days, right? And so, and you're gonna send one item to the database. That little bit of overhead is nothing to worry about, but you're reading from the database hundreds of times a day, thousands of times a day, depending on the traffic of your blog, every time someone views a web page on your blog, you're basically reading from that database. And so all of those database reads, if you can reduce the overhead and the time it takes 
on those over on those reads, um, it's totally worth it. And so that's what we want to do. We want to add the index. Um, just to give you quick numbers, I know we ran a test once um, somewhere I was working, and we had a hundred thousand items in our database, and we ran it without an index, and it took I think two and a half seconds to find the item in the database out of a hundred thousand, or was it a million? I can't remember. But the number it was two and a half seconds to to find these, it might've been 10 million, it was a lot. We basically flooded it with information and it was two and a half seconds. With the index, it was it was only a 10th of one second, so 0.1 seconds with the index. So it saves significant amounts of time to read from the database when you add an index. Don't go adding indexes willy-nilly though because it adds a lot of space. You're creating another file basically that the database holds onto that contains your index. Okay, but if you, things like slugs, you're gonna want to because when we um, when someone types your slug into the URL, soon what we're gonna do is we're gonna have Laravel go out, take that information from the URL, search the database for a post that matches that slug, and so since we're doing that search and that's wait, the page request is waiting on this huge piece of information. We gotta do a massive search across every blog post. That index is gonna be really important. So let's go ahead and just take a look at that. All right, so. A little bit of time has passed. I actually had to film this vid, the, the second part of this video on a different day, thus the wardrobe change. But um, anyway, I'm gonna pick up right where I left off. Um, so I can't remember exactly why I got cut off in the last thing. I had to go somewhere and um, ended up not coming back and not be able to finish, finish it until the next day. Um, but anyway, picking up where we left off right here, what I wanna show you guys is that there's still a few things we have to do before we run this migration. The most important thing that we need to do is obviously create an index. Now that may not be obvious for all of you if you haven't worked with um, a, a database in the past, but it's important to make a data or to make an index on any sort of column that you're going to be running lots and lots of queries, um, especially ones specific to like sorting and things like that or searching. If you're going to be searching a column a lot, you need to be. It's a really good idea to have an index. I actually did a test at a job I had a while ago. And um, we had like, I think it was around 10 million um, item, uh, rows in a database. It's a huge, huge database, huge. And um, we, if you actually tried to search a column that was not indexed, it took like, I think it was like two and a half seconds to get a result back from that, um, from that query. However, when we, um, when we turned it around and we, uh, we actually indexed that same column, it was down to one-tenth of a second, so 0.1 seconds, which is obviously a huge difference. And with slugs, it's, we're going to be searching this, um, this column a lot because obviously the slug is going to be what's in the URL. So when someone types in the URL, we need to grab that URL slug quickly, search in the database for a column that has that URL, and then... Um, return a, a page displaying that that post, obviously. So it's going to be really important that we get quick results. You can't wait two and a half seconds just for a database to query. Um, it, it wouldn't take that long with how small of a database we have, but you know, if it were to build up to that, you can't take a few seconds to just to query the database and then to execute all the code on top of that. You could be looking at four seconds of five seconds of re server response time, which is not going to work for any sort of real world application. So it's really important that we do a index. Also, it's going to be important that we create a unique index. And this is because a unique index ensures there's no duplicate items in the database. So if you tried to create a row with a duplicate entry, it will um, obviously return an error and not let you um, do that. And the reason for that should be pretty obvious, but basically you can't have two slug, you can't have two posts with the same slug because how are we going to know which one you're searching for? Okay, so there are ways around that. You could do a... Um, uh, like some of what WordPress does is it actually divvies up the URLs based on like month and year. And so that allows you to have some duplicates potentially if as long as they're not in the same month or year or whatever. But we're for simplicity, we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to say no duplicates at all. That makes it easy. We're just going to do a unique index in our database. Okay, so let's do that real fast. The way you do that, if I'm gonna, just going to pull up for us real quick. A, um, the Laravel documentation. So we're just gonna come over here to laravel.com. I think I actually already had this open on the previous video, but I have previously, I've since closed it. Um, okay, down here at the bottom under di database migrations, we should be able to find, um, I think it's under writing. Oh, I can't remember, but it's somewhere in here. So let's just come down to writing migrations and scroll down. And it's on after these. 
here's where you get, let's see, where's our indexes? Creating indexes. So here's where it talks to you about creating indexes. And you guys can read a little more detail about this, but I've already kind of explained some of it. And you can see here that if you want to create a unique index, you can actually just add this unique method to the end of your column name. So this is actually exactly what we're going to be doing here. We're going to be doing um, a string for our slug, and then we're going to be adding it, making it unique. So let's come back over to our project, and we're going to just take our table right here, slug, and we're going to add unique to it. Okay, so that's going to make a unique item in the database um, and create that index. Now, the last thing I wanted to do, I think it's up here, but basically I just wanted to, since I'm a little bit um, OCD about the organization of my database, um, let me open up the database really fast. Okay, so now we're just gonna come in here to posts and um, look at the database. So, <coughs> really quick, I know that you're like shocked right now because my database already has a slug, a slug column and uh, it's also empty. And I'm gonna explain why that is in just a second because I made some mistakes were made. We'll just say we'll put it that way. Um, I made some mistakes when I uh, was actually filming this the first time, and then trying to fix my mistakes is when I ran out of time. So that's why I came back here. Um, but basically, what I want to do is I want to ensure that this slug gets put here between body and created at. Again, I'm OCD about having created at and updated at at the end of my column. So when I'm looking at it. Um, Create at and update it at are always at the very, very end. So what I want to do is ensure that slug goes between the body and the created at. And I actually talked about this in a previous video. And this is where you could just add um, after like this. And you could ensure that it goes after a certain column. And so only with, this is only supported in MySQL, but we're using MySQL in this case. And MySQL allows us to basically specify where to put the call. All right, so that's basically all we need. So what we're doing is we're saying create a, create a var car named slug, make it unique with a unique index, and then add um, the, um, at, put it after the body, but before the created at. Okay, so that's what we're saying it to do here, and that's what we're going to do. Now we can just keep what we have right here. We actually don't need to specify to unindex this unique column because by default when we drop the column, because the index is tied specifically to the column, we don't need to tell it to de-index. However, if we are creating our, a different index, which you can create indexes, something like this, you can actually just create an index and we could specify, I think the way it works is you, uh, I actually haven't done this very much, but you could actually specify like slug, um, and let's say we wanted to, for some reason, do the title. Um, you could you could actually specify some of those in here. Actually, you wouldn't do them as, you would do it like this. There we go. Um, we could do that. That's a separate index that's stored, you know, separate from the actual column. And in that case, we would want to de-index um, as part of our down. But we're not, we don't do that here. So we can actually just automatically de-indexes because it's tied to one specific column. When we drop that specific column, it de-indexes, so we're good. All right, so our migration's basically done. Now we can run the migration. And this is where I wanna to talk to you guys about basically what happened previously with what I did and where you guys are gonna run into problems. And this is something that I actually didn't anticipate and it took me a couple minutes to figure it out. And that's that obviously to run the migration, you guys can go ahead and do this. Um, we, you do PHP artisan migrate. Now, <clears throat> um, the problem with the migration says we have it right now is that we already have items in our database. And so what's gonna happen is um, we're creating a slug column. You can see right here we're creating a slug column, but you guys already have probably a whole bunch, and I had a whole bunch of items in the database. Well, because the slug column is, needs to be our unique index, and it's all already empty, when we create the column and then immediately try to make an index on it, which is what our migration does, it creates a, a MySQL error. And the reason for the MySQL error is because obviously it can't create a unique index when there are duplicate entries in the database. And that duplicate entry is a null value because we haven't already created slugs, we, um, we're actually adding it, at, we're adding it and then immediately create an index, which means that there's nothing in the slug column. It's actually, the, the entries are all null and this column technically can't be null, plus it technically can't have unique, can't have uh, duplicates. And so you run into lots of problems and you actually get a MySQL error. So what ends up happening, and I'll show you here on screen what it looked like when I did it, you get this big red um, error that says 
you basically that there was a problem making the index. Now the reason for that is because we already had entries in the database. So what you want to do is what I did here, and we basically want to just roll back, um, roll back the migration. And this brings up a really good point, um, something that you should know about migrations that I don't think we've talked about yet. First of all, you can always do PHP artisan migrate rollback. And that's what you see me do here. Now, the reason that it didn't work here is because I actually, it, it never actually successfully created the, the new migration. And so that, it, since it was never successful, when I clicked rollback to go to the previous migration, um, it actually reverted all of it because we've only had one migration. So we won't, rollback obviously takes you back one migration, but we've only had one migration previous to this one. And normally it would roll back like the one you just did, but it since this one wasn't successful, Laravel didn't realize that this one was successful. So when it rolled back, it rolled back the previous one that was successful. And that's something actually I didn't anticipate. I initially thought it would roll back whatever I did on this because we got partway through the migration. When I looked at my table, we had already created the slug column. And so I thought that it would have thought it was a successful migration, even though it failed partway through with the, it basically we got the, we created the column successfully, but we didn't create the index successfully. So the whole migration was a failure. So Laravel didn't even just pretended like the migration didn't exist, even though we saw effects of it over here we had already created a slug column. So we were kind of caught in between. I tried to reverse the changes. It took us all the way back. I was super bummed. I looked into how I could fix this. Unfortunately, um, I learned that there is no way to fix that actually. That it was something that we would have had to do anyway because we created this unique column. We would have honestly had to roll back the whole da database anyway. So that's something that we are going to do um, right now. So what I'm going to tell you guys to do is this and just know that it's going to completely wipe out our database, undo everything we've done, but then we're going to run the migration again and get the correct database structure that we have now. And all you're going to lose is obviously just the, the test data that we had. And this is also why it's very important that you don't run these types of things on a, um, on an application based server. Okay. So we're doing this in development and that's why it's in development. Um, something like creating an index is not a trivial task to do while under, um, uh, while published to the internet. Okay. So what we're going to do here is PHP artisan migrate. We're going to do a colon and we're going to do, there's two different commands, but don't run this one. I just want to show you, we can do obviously migrate rollback that will take you back one migration. This is really handy. If you, say you're working on the migration, you realize it didn't, it wasn't what you wanted. You could just undo that migration, go back to what you were at before. You can also then tweak what I'll do. Sometimes I'll go back into the migration, tweak the migration file, and then run the migration again and get the new migration in there. So it's the same migration, but you made tweaks to it. So then you get the new effects of the same migration, if that makes sense. So that's what rollback does. It takes you back one migration. The other one you can use is called reset or refresh, I believe. Um, uh, okay. So that's, the, those are the two other ones actually now that I'm remembering. So reset actually takes you all the way back. It undoes every migration you have, or you can do refresh, which actually undoes all the migrations, but then redoes them again. Okay. So what I'm going to have you guys do is I'm going to have you guys do, um, PHP artisan migrate refresh. This will undo everything we've done. Redo it again. We'll get the correct database structure. However, there is the problem that every time you remove that, you're going to lose all your data. So we're going to lose the, uh, the data that we've already created. This leads into another concept called database seeding. And database seeding is a way that you would basically add data um, programmically. Uh, you can do it through the terminal here, and it would add data to the database. And that's something that we didn't do in this tutorial. I usually would do it in my own projects. And that's basically you create some dummy data. It's actually hard coded into a seed file. And then when you run the migrations, you would just run the seed file and that repopulates the database with your seed data. We're not going to do it here, but just know it's possible. You can look up database seeding. It's in the Laravel documentation. I'll link it below. Okay. So that's database seeding. And that allows you to basically, uh, when you're doing this a lot, which you do, you will end up doing this a lot in development. 
um, while developing for an application, you're gonna you're gonna undo stuff, redo it, and so forth. So it's good to know that um, that's 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 one way that you can just quickly repopulate your database table if needed. All right. So for right now, we're gonna click PHP Artisan Migrate Refresh. I'm gonna go ahead and click Enter, and we're gonna look at the data on the screen here. So what we can see happened is it says rolled back, and you can see that it undid all of our um, migration. So we had four migrations up to this point. You guys haven't actually successfully ran the sl add slug to users yet. So you'll probably have three rollbacks and four migrations. Okay. So you'll just be a little bit different. I had already ran this one. So now it's going to also roll back the same one. Um, but anyway, you'll basically undo the work you've just done and then you're going to migrate it again. So you're running it again. Now the other way to do it is just do PHP artisan uh, migrate reset which will simply roll back all of the things you've done and then just leave it as an empty database. And then all you have to do is PHP Artisan migrate and then it would just do these again too. So it just doesn't matter what you do. Uh, refresh is just a shortcut to just undo, redo, get to a clean database, um, stuff like that. So the next thing you could do if you were is, um, I believe it's PH, I'd have to go look at it again. I think it's PHP Artisan DB seed and that would seed the database, but you need to create a seed file with the information to put the seed information to seed your database. That's to fill it full of information. You need to create that first, but that's something that you could then do right after you run the migration, and that would put your new data in. However, unfortunately, right now we're gonna be looking at this right now. I'm just gonna refresh the database. That's what we got. We've got the correct structure. We just don't, unfortunately, we unfortunately don't have any data, which is going to be a little bit annoying, but we will work on that in a second, okay? So that's what we're working on here, guys. Um, we now successfully have the database structure for what we need. Now, what do we need to do next? What we need to do next, basically, is we need to go and if we, let's just take a look at it, actually. So you guys can kind of visually see what we need to do next. I'm going to open a new tab, PHP Artisan Serve, and that's just obviously going to run our server. And then we're going to open up the server here, local Thos 8000. Okay, so you can see that we're first of all pulling no items anymore. Remember how we were actually dynamically pulling the most recent five posts? You don't see that anymore because we don't have any information in our database. So what we could do is if we come over here to slash posts, you would normally see database data, but there's nothing in the database, so nothing's showing up. We could, though, create a new post. However, we're going to run into a problem here because we don't have a slug field to input our slug, and the slug is a required field. Okay, so that the next thing we need to do is we need to add a slug field in here. We need to add the slug field. We need to make sure the slug field is saved to the database, and that way we're able to create the slug so that we the user can create the slug, and then we are going to um, then the the last part is then to actually make sure that when you type the slug into the URL, that it obviously pulls the correct post into the, into the into view. Okay. Because this video is going long, I think we're close to 40 minutes right now. I'm gonna go ahead, cut the video off here, and then we're gonna finish the next two parts. We'll see how timing goes, but we'll either do one part in the next video and then the third part in the in the uh, third video, or we'll just squeeze those two together. But I'm not sure how it's gonna work out, but we're gonna go ahead and cut the video off here and then finish this up in the next tutorial. Okay, guys, thanks a ton. Um, this video didn't work out super smoothly as I'd hoped. Um, I, I It took a little bit longer, but we learned some really good stuff. Anyway, next video, guys, I'll see you guys in a second. I'm gonna try actually start filming it now and then have that up, to, uh, have that up soon. But um, we're gonna go ahead, create a field for our database. We're also gonna make sure that when we come to these other, um, like when we're going to edit a post and stuff like that, that we have a field in those. So we gotta go through our CRUD and add this field in here. Um, on top of what we had before. It's pretty easy though. We should it shouldn't take too long. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for your hard work. Thanks thanks so much for the support. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Follow me on Twitter if you'd like. Um, I kind of hit up stuff about the channel every once in a while. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.